Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day today. What we're gonna do for this week's video is talk about 10 things I wish I had known about guitar early on. Let's get started. Number one is absolutely massive and something I wish I had been taught a little bit more when I was younger and it's the concept of replication versus creation. Now replicating other people's music is an absolutely essential part of learning, right? We learn their songs, we learn their solos, we love to replicate other people's music but often at the expense of our own creation. Now this is particularly true of the classical branches. Doesn't matter if it's piano or band or guitar, whatever you're learning, it's like learn a book, you pass it, learn another book, you pass it, you learn another book. It's replication, 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 and there's no application or creation. So if you're a young student, ask your teacher, what can I do with the things you're teaching me? How can I be creative with them? And if you have a good instructor, they will let you know. And if you're a guitar teacher or an instructor, um, have assignments where you teach a concept and give your student room to create. Right now we're so overloaded on replication and so underloaded on creation. Now the second thing I wish I knew about guitar when I was younger was how to pick the right amp. This was an expensive investment and you wanted to get it right. Now this was before YouTube so you couldn't listen to a lot of samples. So you had to kind of go down to your local music store and depending on who was working there it could be a little bit sketchy. Now I grew up listening to bands like Pink Floyd, like Rush, like Dream Theater, Stevie Ray Vaughan, guys like that. And other than Stevie, those guys had incredibly elaborate rigs. So as a young player, I'm like, well, I guess I need a 4x12 cab and a 100 watt Marshall head. I just didn't know any better. Then I picked up a concert DVD of Carlos Santana and that changed absolutely everything. That guy was playing the biggest stadiums in the world, giant tours and stuff like that. He was playing through a 112 combo. So I saved up my money delivering newspapers and flyers for like a whole year, saved up like 800 bucks, found my used Blue Angel amp at my local music store, and I've been playing on it for the last 15 years. So all that to say, if you're a young musician, a 112 speaker amp is gonna be the sweet spot for you. It's gonna sound way better than, you know, your little eight inch practice amps or even a 10 inch amp. A 112 speaker is the sweet spot. It'll last you for years. Now number three is something I wish I had practiced more when I was younger. This is the concept of dynamics or louds and softs or playing with feeling. So if you're a young player or a new player, start practicing your dynamics now. It will like pay off huge in the future. So when I was younger for the first few years, I just played like survival guitar. I didn't have louds and softs. I didn't leave spaces. I just played. And that's sort of just a function of learning. But I wish I had had a teacher who had said, you know what? I want you to practice this song or this chord progression or this little scale passage and I want you to play it loud and then I want you to play it soft and then I want you to uh, play it with a crescendo and then play it with a decrescendo and just you know start teaching players how to play with feeling younger. Now the fourth thing I wish I had known about guitar when I was younger is how to set up my own instrument. Now I played on some absolutely brutal guitars. I swear I played a guitar with just massive fret buzz for like five years. Never got it set up. I was always too busy saving up for the next pedal or whatever. I, I, I didn't want to take my guitar in to get it set up. But in this age of YouTube, you know, finding out how to straighten your neck with the truss rod, how to raise your saddles, um, you know, how to set your intonation, all that stuff is readily available online. So if you're a young player, take some time, learn about your instrument, learn how it works, learn how to set it up. Now there's a couple big advantages to playing on a well set up instrument. First of all, it's gonna make you play better, whether you like low action or high action, whatever you prefer, um, you know, if you're comfortable on your guitar, you're gonna play better. You're gonna play uh, more interesting things, you'll be able to play faster if you need to on a certain passages or whatever. It's just gonna be more comfortable for you. And secondly, it's gonna sound better. So if your strings are too low and they're choking out, you're gonna kill your sustain, you're gonna get fret buzz. Um, if you raise them up a little bit more, you'll get more sustain, the notes will ring out a little bit better. So having a guitar that's well set up will make you play better, it'll make you sound better. All right, on to number five, and this is something I definitely wish I had known when I was younger and when I switched from piano to guitar, and that is the notes on my guitar neck. So coming from piano, it was just so easy to identify every single note. It was just an octave set of notes repeated eight times up and down the keyboard and your notes were always in the same spot all the time. With guitar, it's not so easy. You can play the same exact pitch in multiple spots. You can think of your notes vertically, horizontally, diagonally. And when you just first pick this up after playing something you know, as easily to identify as piano, 
it's a bit of a mess. Now, thankfully, there are patterns on guitar that you can use to help figure out all the notes under your neck. And in music in general, there's always a set of, you know, natural tones and semitones. The guitar is no exception. So it's one of the first things I teach my students. Um, and it really is the difference between like a guitar player and a musician. A musician knows notes. A musician knows how to communicate notes to other musicians. A guitar player might be like, well, this is my seventh fret. And then I go to my sixth fret and my fifth fret. And if you're playing with a piano player or a sax player or whatever band you're in, they'll be like, dude, what are you talking about? But if you say, oh, I'm starting on my D and then I'm just descending down to my A or whatever you're doing, um, that makes more sense because you're speaking music. Now, number six on my list is a little bit more abstract, a little bit more of an advanced skill, but something I wish my teachers had talked about when I was younger, when I was learning piano, when I was learning guitar, and that is how to listen. Now, learning to listen is absolutely an essential skill to playing any sort of music. Now, when you're younger, especially when I was younger, I was just trying to survive. I was just trying to play the right chords in the right time and not drop too many beats and try to be right on the downbeat and, you know, not have all these muted notes and missing notes in my chords. So I'm not talking about like when you're just learning at that level. But once you've sort of, you know, got some of the fundamentals down, learning to listen will change everything about the way you play. So developing your listening skills as a young musician will yield at least three positive things. First of all, it's gonna make you play better parts. So listening to others around you and learning when to play and what to play um, is just a huge skill that really is developed over many years. But if you can start now and just not play like, you know, like I was talking about dynamic wise, don't play just like full out loud for the whole song all the way through, right? Learning to listen will be like, oh, you know, maybe I should drop down here or maybe I should switch from bar chords to like small voicings or single or single notes for this part, right? Like just learning to listen to the overall uh, scape of the music, not just your own part. Secondly, it's going to make your tone better. So stopping and listening and saying, you know what, my guitar sounds a little weird here, or there's a little fret buzz here, I should fix that, or you know what, just stopping and listening to your actual tone will make you sound better. And thirdly, it's gonna make you play well with others. So listening to when, you know, maybe the piano is taking a solo and you need to back off, right? So that's where you're listening to the whole band, or maybe, you know, there's a cool bass part here, so I can double up with him if they want, or I can back right off if I want, or it's gonna be just drums only for a bit, right? Just listening to that overall soundscape um, that will help develop you into an amazing musician. All right, the seventh thing I wish I knew about guitar when I was a younger player was how to set up my amp. Heck, I just wanted to know what each knob did on my amp. I had no clue. And I still have students, you know, come in saying, my amp tone sucks. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, bring it in. Let's do a whole lesson on what your knobs do, how to set up your EQ. And it really changes a lot of things for them. It makes playing so much more enjoyable when they have a tone that they actually like to play. So I've done a whole video on Guitar Tone 101. We talk about setting your pickup heights, um, using your, your volume and tone control on your guitar, different EQ profiles on your amp. Check that one out. But if you're a young player, you need to know what each knob does on your amp, how it's gonna affect your sound, how to set up your gain, um, all those different things. Understanding your amp is absolutely essential. And I wish I had learned that earlier. Uh, it would have really helped me dial in, you know, the tones that I wanted to achieve. All right, onwards and upwards to number eight. This is talking about adding space and simplifying. Now, this would be a foreign concept when I was young and I was just learning. I would not stop, just like I wouldn't play with dynamics, I wouldn't know where to stop and where to start. I didn't know anything about phrasing. So if you're a young player, ask your teacher about that. But I had a teacher explain it to me uh, in a really great way. It was like a conversation. Stop and take a breath, say something interesting. Stop and take a breath. And he's like, you don't wanna be, um, like in a conversation with somebody who never lets you get a word in edgewise, that they're just talking and 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 talking. Don't play like that. Play like you're having a conversation. Say something, take a breath, let the listener think about it, consider it. And I thought that was just a great analogy. So if you're a young player, play as if you're having a conversation. Stop, take a breath, say something interesting. Um, you know, you don't want to just say something boring or the same thing over and over, right? You want to still do something interesting. You want to play fast. You want to play slow. You want to play with vibrato. Um, you want to let notes sustain. You want to do all those different things, dynamics. Um, so it's a lot to think about, but definitely if you're a younger player, learn to sometimes stop, take a breath and go. Now for number nine, the thing I wish I would have done when I was first learning was to stop rushing things and get it clean. 
Now, if you're a young player, say 12 years old to 18 years old, uh, in that stage of life, we're not really known for being super patient and like precise and you know intentional about things, but it pays off absolutely massive as your learning goes. So if I was learning something, I would just rush through it. I wouldn't care if it was clean or not. I would just play it and I'd be like, oh yeah, with lots of distortion, that sounds awesome, right? But if you took that away and made me play it just like unplugged or on an acoustic guitar or something, I would, it would just be absolutely brutal. It would just sound terrible. So my advice to young players is if you're practicing something, it doesn't matter if it's the simplest pentatonic lick or uh, some, some bar chords or whatever. If you're having notes that aren't ringing out, if you're doing too many ticks, if your right hand and left hand aren't working together in time, um, slow down, don't rush your practice time, be intentional, even though I know it kind of goes against, um, you know, our personalities when we're that young, um, it will just, you know, pay amazing dividends in the future as you start to play more and more complex music, um, having that coordination between your hands, um, you know, and just sort of like that, that muscle memory of your hands working together cleanly and slowly and precisely will just be absolutely amazing. So if you're young, start practicing that now. All right, you guys, we've arrived at number 10. This one's really tricky for young players, but I wish I had invested a little bit more in that, and that is understanding basic music theory. Now, you guys would not believe how many students I've had come back to me after graduating um, in their early 20s, and they're like, Daryl, let's just do a whole year of theory. I just wanna understand the global concept, how this all works together, where the guitar fits in, all that stuff, um, and they're like, I didn't really listen when I was younger, and I'm like, hey, I've been there, no judgment. <laughs> it's tough when you're young to, to be motivated enough to learn theory. Now, you certainly don't have to become a theory king when you're young. There are certain concepts that you can sort of grow and build upon as you learn theory, and it really opens up some massive, massive doors in the future. Um, and I sort of liken it like I was talking about learning the notes on your neck. I wish I'd done that earlier. Um, because it really differentiates between a guitar player and a musician. A musician can understand the concepts, how all these things work together, how all the chords and the keys go together and how the scale goes over that and all the, all the different concepts that are interwoven. And it really creates a well-rounded musician. Now, that being said, we really have the deck stacked against us as guitar players because we've sort of boiled down the guitar to the least common denominator numbers. We don't talk about, you know, note names or octaves or, or any of that stuff. We just talk about frets and strings. So we've sort of boiled this amazing musical history that we have and we've boiled it down, 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 down so that you can learn things easily and efficiently. And that's really great because somebody can pick up the guitar and start learning immediately. But we sort of like kind of keep it really, really narrow. And we just have, like I said, numbers and strings, and we don't talk about how it all works together. And theory is the thing that takes that really narrow view of an instrument and just blows it wide open. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed my 10 things that I wish I had practiced or known about guitar earlier. And if you're an older player, don't be discouraged. There's always time to learn something new. I'm constantly doing it every single day. I'm constantly getting challenged. Um, so if you're older, don't worry about it. If you're younger, hopefully these things helped you. All my information will be on the screen right now. Click my face right here to subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. Other than that, have an awesome week, you guys. We'll see you next week with a new video. Take care.